maybe. <laughs> hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. You never know if we're live or not. That's why I really pay attention to that light. We are live today with my old friend. He's not old, but we've been friends for a long time. He's a business professional. He's in the gaming world. We'll talk about that. The topic today is what's the pinnacle of social impact. I love the title of this show, so I can't wait to take a deep dive with my dear friend Rupert. Megnot is on the show. Welcome, Rupert. How you doing? Great, great. How you doing, man? Good I am doing you. fantastic. Loving the jacket as always. Thank uh, you. You, you can pull off that. I'm just, I'm just trying to follow your lead. Nah, you always look good. I love that jacket. Uh, I, I love how you're pulling off the white hair. I'm starting to get this on my uh, on the sides here, so it's coming, yeah. my friend. It's coming. If you can't All right. Them, join them. Yep. You still, you look great. You look, Thanks. you look amazing. Um, so let's talk about you. Let's keep. Taking a deep dive before we went live, okay. I told you the audience loves origin stories. So mm -hmm. tell them a little bit about you. Okay. Um, well, uh, I grew up in Detroit. I'm an immigrant and, uh, um, you know, started in the inner city and worked my way out. And then uh, I came down to Orlando in 86 to get my MBA at Rollins. Uh, worked full time, went to school full time, got into tech. And uh, my second year there, worked as a consultant for Martin Marietta, and then just you know fell in love with tech and have been in it ever since. And started my first business or my first business. I had already bought, I had already started and sold before I came down here. Wow! And then um, I came uh, when I came here. Then I started more businesses. I've had like fifteen businesses <laughs> since uh, since I've been down here and. Uh, you know, had a few failures, had a, had several exits. Uh, nothing the Wall Street Journal would be writing about, but I was happy. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I've been an educator. I taught for six years at, at uh, both UCF's Rosen College. Uh, that was an undergrad course on entertainment technology. And then I taught at Full Sail at, uh, for their game design master's degree program. For And I taught project management to aspiring producers and developers there. And, um, you know, I've been working with startups ever since, like, I think 92 is when I started Virtual Entrepreneur. And I've talked to and I've consulted with and mentored thousands of them since then. I have a meal with a mentor program where, you know, I, I donate like an hour, hour and a half of my time to somebody if they get me out of the office and buy me a meal. And uh, I've had over uh, 350 uh, of those. Wow. And uh, yeah, so. Recently, and, and as an entrepreneur, I, I consider myself a hardcore entrepreneur. Okay. You know, it's basically why, that, right? why, why, hard, why hardcore? When I start a business, I'm willing to risk everything in my life for that business, except for my relationship with you know who. All right. I get it. And so <laughs> I guess that's why I'm saying <laughs> that's a good one. I'm glad you said that out loud. You saved yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no life. I mean, all I do is work and then I, I hang out with my buds and we smoke cigars and have a good time. Um, so in any case, uh, I've, I've been involved in and out of the game industry for, for quite a few years. Uh, my first dive was, was at Martin back in the late eighties, uh, doing VR for them and, um, helping get you know people will say we did VR back in the late eighties. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Still not impressed, but that's a whole nother. Uh, that's a whole nother <laughs> we have to do a whole discussion. show on that. Yeah, that's another discussion. And then, um, uh, so. Why? Let me ask you, you. You said a whole bunch of stuff, so I've got a couple yeah. of questions. Sure, sure. Tell me about startups, because that's that's a that's been a buzzword more so on the last five years or so. Like it just seems sure. to be startups. Why startups? Why are startups a big deal to you? Um, because it's part of your MO. I mean, when I think of startups, when I think mm -hmm. of somebody who helps startups, I absolutely, you're one of the first people I think of. So, but yeah. why startups? They can be risky. Uh, they can be a lot of work. People can have a great idea, but no idea how to implement. Um, why, why are startups part of your daily thing that you, you like because, to kind of look at? Because they drive all business in the world, right? Google was a startup. Yahoo was a startup. Amazon, Tesla, SpaceX, Apple, they all start were startups, right? And um, 
so the the so what I what I what drives me is that I I, I hate to see startups fail. Okay, and they fail for a number of reasons. Um, you know, first of all, they, they they don't know how to make a business out of their idea, right? And um, you know, they they focus on making a product that they want to make or a service that they want to make, but there's no market for it. Right. Okay. And this includes, by the way, you know, 42% of companies that get venture funding that fail. To me, that's the part. There's no market for it. It's right? so fascinating because I think, I think, and I love that you brought that up. Yeah. I think somebody says they think startup and they go, I've got an idea. Um, now I need to go get money. And they don't think through the process. There's no business planning, which you and I have done shows yeah. on. There is no um, taking a look at if the market demands it. And if right. you create it, are you creating a demand for it? I mean, there's all of the things that you were just talking about. I right. think people think, well, I've got a great idea and I've got a whole bunch of friends. So why right. not do a startup? Well, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why. First of all, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, um, you know, you have to have four primary quality personality characteristics that are at the top 5%, right, in order to be really successful. I'm not saying that if you don't have those characteristics, you cannot be successful. It'll just be a lot harder, okay? And so those are creativity, which everybody has, uh, but it has to be really in an abundance. You, you don't limit it to just the code you're writing or the, the design you're creating or the website or whatnot. It's in the contracts you're writing. It's in the negotiations you do. It's in the, you know, it's, it's, it's in the pitches you give. It's everything, right? Then you've got initiative because nobody's going to do it for you. You, you, know, when, you know, when you start a business on your own, it's it, no, the buck stops here. Okay. Yes. And so you're the one that has to get up every morning and just get, just do it, just get to it. Then the other big thing too is risk tolerance. All right, starting a business, as you mentioned earlier, is a highly risky business uh, endeavor, right? And you know, it's it's like, what are you willing to tolerate? Are you willing to tolerate, you know, risking your four hundred one k? Are you willing to tolerate quitting your job? Are you wish, Are you uh, willing to tolerate no social life or? You know, uh, having your and this is just a start, right? Yeah. Because I mean, but if you're not willing to do these things, right, it's just really going to make your chances of 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 not being successful that much greater. And you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. I'm just saying that generally speaking, you've got to be willing to risk a lot. And okay? I think people need to. My experience with anybody who's done a startup is. They don't evaluate that and they don't plan for enough time right. for it to work. And so right. I've had people who quit a job and ha don't even have the money yet to fund their uh, their project or they quit a job that right. has benefits and they haven't thought about what are they going to do now that they don't have health mm -hmm. insurance. There's so much that goes into the decision. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, we, we want people to be successful. I know you do because you mentor people all the time, but it has yeah. to be smart. It has to be at least you've got to know all the facts and you've got to understand the risks before right. you make that leap. Well, the thing is, too, is that so you've got that risk tolerance that you have to have uh, because the vast majority of people who start businesses have don't have sufficient risk tolerance. You know, even the people that go to inc incubators and accelerators, you know what their success rate is? You have any idea? I have no idea. Tell me. Five percent. Yeah, five percent. Y Combinator, five hundred startups, two of the best accelerators, incubators in the world. They're at seven percent. So what happens to the other ninety-three percent? Right, ninety-three, ninety-five percent. What happens is, first of all, they pay them to they pay they're paying entrepreneurs to be entrepreneurs, which just totally defeats the purpose. Right, totally defeats the purpose. Then what they do is they're not teaching aspiring entrepreneurs how to think like entrepreneurs. And not only that, how to think like project managers 
And I'm not talking about everybody and their grandmother who calls themselves a project manager. Anybody who puts their clothes on in the morning is a project manager, technically. <laughs> right? What I'm saying is really understanding project management at a fundamental level, you know, and I'm talking the basis, you know, the basic project management from the project management bot, you know, you know, uh, book of knowledge, right? You know, the traditional stuff, because all Scrum, Agile, Lean, Six Sigma, all that stuff stems from there. Okay. And what people do is they focus on those other things without knowing the basics. And then they wonder why they keep failing all the time. Yes. And so, um, so, so you've got initiative, creativity, um, risk tolerance. And the fourth one is resilience, right? The resilience comes in when the money does run out right. and you're like, okay, now I got to get more. Right. And, um, you know, if you're, if you've got a startup and this goes to answer your question previously, if you've got a startup and you need money, number one, who's going to give you money if you haven't put any money in yourself? Yes. Right. If you don't have skin in the game, it's going to make it that much harder for you to get money from anybody else. Cause that's the first thing they're going to ask. That's right. Okay. Now, once you've put and risked, you know, a sufficient amount of money and capital into it. Then you go to your friends and family. We call it love money because they know you the best. Love money. I yeah. love they, 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 they know you the best. They, they, they're the ones who are more apt to support you and to help you out and things like that. And then they're more apt to, you know, here, I'll, I'll give you this for a little bit or a loan or whatever it is. And you can get that. And that can be anywhere from $10,000, $5,000, $10,000, it could be hundreds of thousands, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then what you do with that money will get, you know, other people who are interested in, in uh, venture and funding you uh, where you want to go. Yes. So let me talk about uh, the pinnacle of social impact. If I was mind. just going to ask you, so take it away, Rupert. <laughs> I love it when you take over the show. All right. All right. I really do. So uh, typically people associate social impact with, um, you know, efforts that are on the st sustainability side, environmental, ecological, uh, humanitarian, uh, and things like that, which is wonderful. And these, and there's, there's an, an unlimited supply of, um, opportunities for people to, uh, you know, get involved in, in these types of social, social impact types of activities. However, the vast majority of them are um, are nonprofit, right? Yeah. And so the people that that in, that typically donate to these, they're not. I guess we call it an investment, but it's it's a donation. And and the people that donate do it. You know, they 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 want to get a tax break and and so forth. But they're it makes them feel good that they're doing it. But what people don't understand and they're totally ignoring is what's the fundamental thing that influences whether or not these these you know mpos are are getting money and that is do they have the means to do it right yes. and what limitations do what other limitations do they have okay so if we can influence something positively that makes it that adds far more people into the potential customers and donors right of of any uh, NPO, then don't you think that would have a far, a far, a more far reaching impact on all nonprofit organizations that are social impact based, right? So what we do is we say, look, looking at startups and looking at social impact. And then we say, look, the biggest thing that can influence any, you know, the biggest thing to influence social impact is group is democratizing wealth in a society. Okay. And well, I'll explain that for people. Okay. So typically, you know, in venture capital and in gaming and a lot of other things, you know, investors go after these hits. Okay. They're after the home run. Okay. The problem with that, that is that their chance of getting a real home run is about 3%. Yeah. Okay. Low. So, so they're literally throwing their money away on purpose. And I'm sorry, I don't invest that way. Okay. I, 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 I'm not interested in investing that way. And so what I say is, look, 
if we can utilize good project management and entrepreneurship, put those two things together. And <laughs> I've been writing a book for years here, but yeah. <laughs> so in any case, put those two things together and then build an organization that creates many wealthy people, like all the stakeholders. For example, in, a, in the game industry, if, if uh, you know, 80% of the developers in, in the game industry are independent or indie. And, but the thing is, is in the game industry, 3% of publishers get 94% of the revenues and 85% of the games they make are sequels. But we know from, you know, you've heard of Minecraft and That's Candy correct. Crush and Angry Birds and PUBG and all these other games. They're, they were created by indies, original content created by indies. So we know that the 3 billion gamers in the world love and crave original content. So what I'm saying is that these indie developers who also have a 5% success rate, right? Can you imagine what this world would be if they in all startups had a 10% success rate? Can you rate? imagine? Wow. Or a 20%, right? Or a 50%? Can you imagine? I mean, startups and, and small businesses already account for 13 times the, the patents and intellectual property as, as the big corporations do. So, right? Yes. So, um, so what we say is let's what we do at bgv burnout game ventures is we create economic development through game development for so for example a typical indie company if they if they get the interest of a publisher will the, the publisher will will buy their intellectual property so they'll pay them fifty thousand hundred thousand five hundred thousand whatever right to and then now the publisher owns their their uh, creative freedom and, and their intellectual property, and they get 10% of the, the profits, all right? What we say is, look, creating the game is half the battle, not not 10% of it, right? And Or 5% or 2% or 0% of it, right? And then, but doing the other half, which is the business and the marketing and the finance and accounting and all that other stuff is the other half, all right? But we throw in there, we teach them how to fish, our goal is to kick their butts out the door when they're a sustainable business with their own marketing department, their own business development, finance, accounting, CPAs, attorneys, the whole shot. And then what we do is we give them 50% of the revenues. So if they create another PUBG, every single person in that company is now a multimillionaire. Yes. From the secretary to the developer, to the artists, to the designers, to the investors, every single one of them, right? And so now if we create 30 companies, right? In the next five years, that's 500 to a thousand people who are making an average of hundred grand a year or more and not including the profits or the, or the home runs. And now they're paying their taxes. That's they're, right. they're shopping at, you know, Whole Foods and, and Publix, and they're sending their kids to Trinity Prep and Highland and 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 other school and uh, public schools and so forth, and they're donating to any nonprofit that they want to without limitation. Correct. Right. So it's basically economic development is the pinnacle of social impact because it is the tide that raises all ships. See, you, you close things out so well. I love that <laughs> quote, by the way. Um, all right, so we had a lot of questions, um, mm -hmm. but what I want them to do, uh, I'm going to send them to you. You can take a look at them later. Sure. I you a follow up. Mm -hmm. um, I want people to find out the best way to reach you because we have a lot of people asking about startups and I people asking, do you only do game startups? Um, I know that answer is not accurate because you've done a whole bunch of stuff before. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what's the what's the best way for them to reach out to you and learn more and even participate? We had a question. Participate in your mentor lunch. So uh, we're we're all over the place. Um, you know, go to our if if you have a game and you want us to take a look at it, um, just go to our our, our website read up about us uh, and go to our apply page and apply to have your game published. I have to be honest right right now, we're at full capacity and we're raising capital in order to, you know, get more capacity. Yeah. So 
you know, our goal right now is is to raise seven hundred and fifty thousand. And um, uh, so we're, we're looking, I've been talking to investors. I mean, last April, my team said, Rupert GTFO, we got this, just go, go find money. And, <laughs> and I'm Handle. like, oh man, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I've been looking and it's been difficult because, you know, change is, change is, is, is difficult and people don't like change. And what we're offering is something that's truly going to transform the industry. And, and so much so that if you see this right above my shoulder here, yes. right there, that is an innovation award that we got two weeks ago at Synapse uh, for um, <coughs> right there. Yeah. And uh, so we, we were at Synapse, which is the biggest entrepreneurial uh, conference in the state. Uh, we won the Entertainment Innovator of the Year uh, Award. And, on, Fantastic. Uh, Congratulations. So and it's because of what I just discussed. Right. It's it's because we're. We, our business model's new, our finance model, everything is new. Uh, so go to our website and apply there. Uh, we'll get your information. It goes into a queue. To be honest, we have 150 other companies in that queue. Um, sure you do. The, um, if you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, you can reach out to me. Um, we're on Facebook. We're in link. We're in. Um, Gosh, everywhere. Pinterest, You're everywhere. We've got you tagged. YouTube. YouTube. YouTube's a great place. I have a number of my pitches there. You can see the games that we put out there and everything like that. So, um, yeah, definitely. And then and if the, you, the website is scrolling across the bottom, but we've tagged um, Rupert and everything. You guys can just find him anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, reach out. Even though he's got 150 companies deep, He's working with, you never know what the next amazing idea is. And Rupert loves. You never know. Challenge. It's like Mark Cuban says, who's next? Right? That's right. Who's, who's next? next? All right. Yeah, right. joy always to have on my friend, Rupert Magnot. Thank Go you. That website, reach out to him. Let's get you guys going. Reach Even out. if it's the first step, <laughs> it's still a step. All right, guys. We'll see you soon.